With the outbreak of COVID-19, scientists have become ever more prominent around the world. They have become household names more than ever before, becoming the darlings of radio and TV networks who are eager to lap up their views on the pandemic and how it will evolve and ultimately end. More than ever before, we are being influenced by how these scientists think and their views are shaping our lives in ways we never imagined possible. Well, perhaps in our worst nightmares. Here's today's question for you though. Would your life be in a better place if you were to think like a scientist? Have a think about how you thought and spoke during the past week. Have you preached about some topic close to you? Have you prosecuted others for not aligning with your view on this topic? Could you have strayed into politicking on this topic? What would your past week have been like if you were to replay it and replace your existing ways of thinking with thinking like a scientist? What would that look like? Before we answer that question, let's take a quick visit over to Milan, Italy. Recently, a group of Italian entrepreneurs were attending a training program in entrepreneurship. The course lasted for four months, and during this time, they learned how to create a business strategy, how to interview customers, how to build a minimal viable product, and then build and refine a prototype. There was something unusual about this training program, though. The participants were not aware that they had been divided into two groups, a scientific thinking group and a control group. The training both groups received was identical, except for one crucial part. One of the groups were encouraged to view their startup through a scientific filter. With this filter on, they viewed their strategy as theory, their customer interviews as opportunities to develop hypotheses, and their minimal viable product and prototypes as experiments to test their hypothesis. The scientific thinking group were asked to rigorously measure their results and make decisions based on whether their hypotheses were supported or refuted. Do you think using a scientific filter in this case would yield any benefit for those entrepreneurs as they went about building their companies? Well, over the following 12 months, the group who did not get any specific scientific thinking training averaged under $300 in revenue. The group that received the scientific thinking training averaged over $12,000 in revenue. Whoa, so quite a difference, but why? The entrepreneurs who did not receive any scientific thinking training ended up staying wedded to their original strategies and product. They preached the virtues of their past decisions, prosecuted against alternative options, and played politic by catering to advisors who favoured their existing direction. The entrepreneurs who did receive the scientific training had essentially been taught to think like a scientist. They pivoted their strategy and products more than twice as often. When their hypotheses were not supported, they knew it was time to rethink their business models. So let's just be clear about what an hypothesis is and what an everyday example might look like. Think about a question some people might have in their life at the moment. For example, does lifelong learning really have positive long-term benefits? Let's answer the question using a simple five-step approach to developing an hypothesis. Step one, start with questions and assumptions. So the question is, does lifelong learning really have positive long-term benefits? Let's frame the question in a more open-ended way. How might we understand the true value of lifelong learning? The assumptions you have around this question might be influenced by your earlier education. Perhaps you've completed a college course, and perhaps you've done a post-college course some years ago, but you're thinking, that's it now, I'm done. I have enough skills now to last a lifetime, and I can adapt to whatever the working environment is down the road. Step two, do some preliminary research. Your initial answer to the question is based on what you know. At this stage, you should start looking for evidence that lifelong learning is actually beneficial. You might also try and better understand what the term even means. You may have incorrectly assumed that the term lifelong learning only refers to those who go back to college in their 30s or 40s or older. The meaning of the term could be a lot broader than you think. You could start looking at research, for example, on not only the financial impacts of lifelong learning, but also the emotional impacts. For example, your well-being, your mental health, your capacity to deal with stress and illness. Step three, formulate your hypothesis. After your research, you should have a better idea on how to answer the question. In this example, the hypothesis might be lifelong learning not only has positive financial impacts, but also substantial health benefits. Step four, refine your hypothesis. At this stage, you need to look at making your hypothesis specific and testable. All the terms you use in the hypothesis should have clear definitions and should contain relevant variables, the specific group being studied and the predicted outcome of the experiment or analysis. Step five, phrase your hypothesis in three ways. So to identify the variables, you can write a simple prediction in the if-then form. 
The first part of the sentence states the independent variable, and the second part states the dependent variable. So in our example above, this might look like if people between the age of 40 and 50 continue embracing lifelong learning, then their careers and health will be better off. In academic research, hypotheses are more commonly phrased in terms of correlations or effects, where you directly state the predicted relationship between variables. So again, looking at our example, the number of new learning courses completed by people between the age of 40 and 50 has a positive effect on their mental health. If you are comparing two groups, the hypothesis can state what difference you expect you to find between them. So again, in our example, people between the age of 40 and 50 who attended more new learning courses have better mental health than those who attended no new learning courses. Thinking like a scientist forces you to confront your assumptions and gets you to ask meaningful questions about those assumptions. Go back again over the past week and think of those times when you were talking about a topic or subject where certain assumptions you have could be challenged. All it takes is to start thinking like a scientist. That's it for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate if you clicked the like button. If you have any comments, please feel free to share them. As always, I'm interested in your views or your own experiences on thinking like a scientist and what impact you think it could have on your life if you use this approach more regularly. If you want to listen to more stories about thinking more effectively, just subscribe to the channel. Thank you.